Oh no, all of my card slots are filled, but I want to use this Wi-Fi card. Whatever will I do? I see there is still a slot there. That is very convenient because I am about to use this slot. Adapter one. Oh no, I turned on the computer. Let's turn that off. Adapter two. And finally, the finishing touch, Wi-Fi card. And, okay, that is, there we go. Okay, and now we're ready. So, <laughs> absolute jank aside, you can still see that hardware running complete with Wi-Fi card in the AGP slot. It works! You can see right here, it's a little bit hard to see it actually, but yeah, you can see right here, I am connected to Wi-Fi right now, so the card is in fact working. And to prove that, let's load up a browser and head to a website. So I'm going to be using Basilisk, or more specifically, Roytown 1's Serpent backport of it. And as far as I understand, this is probably one of the newest browsers that you can possibly use on Windows XP. But I am not going to be going to sites like YouTube and stuff. That is just way too much for this poor Athlon XP that I'm using. So, yeah. You can already see right now that it's taking a while to load just this browser. It is still working. I can say that. Let's go ahead and open up Task Manager. And yeah, right there. So, I guess while that's happening, let's also just... Oh, there's the browser, I guess. Well, I... While CPU-Z opens up then, let's go ahead and go to a website. So let's just go to the retro web. And for those who might not know, the retro web is a website that collects a lot of old information as well as drivers and manuals and stuff about old motherboards. Obviously, <laughs> Wi-Fi bridged over AGP is not particularly the best thing that you should do. But, yeah, you can see right there, it is still loading, and the Wi-Fi is active. Just gotta wait. It's a very long wait, too. <laughs> well, I guess while that loads in the background, let's take a look at the specs. So, here we have CPU-Z open. This is just a Athlon XP running at 1.1 gigahertz. We have a Shuttle MK32 for our motherboard, and our graphics card is also running over PCIe, if you might not have noticed that I also have a second PCIe bridge there going through two risers to here with the Radeon HD2400. So, oh, looks like the site just loaded, or somewhat loaded. <laughs> it's getting there. Okay, and then we have 1.2 gigs of memory, which is just from a 512 meg stick and a 768, or, wait, no, what? Wait, no, I have a 1 gig stick of RAM and a 512 megabyte stick of RAM, but it looks like only 1.2 gigs is being seen here. But that really doesn't matter, Windows XP is not that particularly heavy on RAM anyway. And yeah, there's the HD2400. 
which does in fact support OpenGL 3.3, but because of the limitations of the processor, that is, it does not support SSE 2, I have been incredibly <laughs> limited by what I am able to run as far as Minecraft goes, because of course we're running Minecraft on this thing. But I, <laughs> I think that this is probably already proof enough that it's working over Wi-Fi. You can see the Wi-Fi card is not all that active. Honestly, I do not know whether I should blame the Wi-Fi card, the fact that it's bridged over AGP, or my home internet, because all three are absolutely garbage here, and this Wi-Fi card I do not use in my main PC anymore because it is so craptastic. So let's close out of that and use one of the only launchers for Minecraft that even somewhat works, which is Betacraft. I also have the old Minecraft launcher here, as well as some slightly, hmm, <laughs> sus launchers there that also ended up not working anyway. I also have MultiMC and AT launcher here. Both of those don't work either because they crash immediately upon startup. So yeah, there are a grand total of two launchers that I can use for Minecraft that start up at all and work. So we're just kind of waiting for Betacraft to open right now. I'll leave the CPU performance stuff open over here. And you can see, yeah, Java right up there. It's just loading itself up. Don't mind the fact that the CPU utilization is kind of low right now. It does, I don't know, I guess run in the background or something as it starts up. So yeah, give it a moment. Come on. There we go. And let's see if I can also load the update news. Okay, looks like there was a little blip of network activity there. Is it going to load anything? Yes, no. And I will also mention that despite Betacraft mostly working, it is usually like 99% of the time, completely unable to download any version of the game on its own. And so I had to use a flash drive or an SD card in a reader to manually download all the versions I wanted to use from my main computer and just put them into the Betacraft folder here. So it looks like my internet is being garbage again because it is not loading anything. But that does not matter because we're going to be playing offline. So let's change this over to that. And it should be able to pull my skin from Mojang servers if it's able to access the internet properly. If not, then I'll probably just be a Steve. So yeah, we're playing a version of InfDev here which, given the hardware combination that I'm using, I think is probably the highest that I would be willing to go with letting it still be playable as well, because everything is bottlenecking everything at this point. Like, the CPU, yeah, it does run at over a gigahertz, but it is a very old architecture, and... Once again, it does not support some instructions that have really become a lot more used in modern programs at this point. So, yeah, let it launch. This has all just been a massive waiting game. Okay. And there we go. We have console output, which means that the game itself should start in a moment, hopefully whenever it's ready.
And I did also reinstall Java 1.8 because for some reason Betacraft originally was working. Oh, no pointer exception. Uh, okay, this must be one of the versions I did not actually have downloaded. That's fine. We can just switch to something else. Uh, let's just do the first. Oh, this is the first version of Instep. Okay, I am thoroughly confusing myself at this point. Uh, versions. I don't know. I do have. Oh, wait. It's one of the zero kilobyte files. Okay. Yeah, that's what Betacraft does on this computer it downloads zero kilobyte files. Okay, uh, this is infdev 630. 630. Okay, let's rename these files. I downloaded these off of Omni Archive, so they do have slightly different file names. Okay, let's rename this to 1340. And this one is dash. 1835. Okay, so now we should be able to run the very last version of InfDev because I already pre downloaded the files. If this fails, then I do not know what to do. So let it run. It should see that the jar file is already downloaded now. So hopefully it'll just fire up. I think you can probably see why I have kind of sort of given up on making any bigger video out of this outside of just, hey, it works somehow, kind of, sort of thing. Because there is so much waiting to do and half the time it does not even work. Okay, we got our console output again. We can watch that to see if any errors come up. If it says null pointer exception, then that means that it's trying to look for a zero kilobyte file again. Oh, and I see a bit of activity on the Wi-Fi. Looks like it might be downloading the skin. Hey, and we're in. Okay. Let's just start a new world. Let's put this always on top so we can watch it. Originally, I was going to try and join a multiplayer server in Minecraft, but I was not able to log in with my Microsoft account on this, even though in the past I have been able to. Oh, looks like I am Steve, so. Oh, nope. Okay, there's my skin. Hey, skin works. Okay, so that does mean, in fact, that the Wi-Fi is working fine. Wow, this is laggy. CPU is pegged at 100. That's obviously expected. Uh, what is... Okay, looks like Task Manager is the most heavy thing <laughs> besides Minecraft, so let's just close that. And let's also pull up the FPS. And let's turn render distance down. Turn on music and sound, because those do work. Though, granted, you probably won't be able to hear the sound very well over the, you know, the jet engine sounds of the CPU fan. But hey, Minecraft. Wow! Oh. Okay, Windows XP. So, yeah, you can see by the frame rate. Oh, it looks like the Wi-Fi adapter is starting to die on me again. Yeah, that's another thing. The Wi-Fi adapter likes to randomly disconnect me from the network over and over after a few minutes. So, it's only the first few minutes of operation when I can actually do anything internet-related without it just constantly failing. Wow, why is it so laggy? It is not normally like this.
Okay, let's save and quit to title for now. What is going on? I don't see anything else running that should be eating up the CPU power. Honestly, I don't really care about that Minecraft world anyway, so let's just try and force quit this. Come on. Ooh, lag. There we go. Okay, we can close that. And instead of using the latest version of InDev, let's do the latest version of InDev instead. That should help quite a bit by limiting the world size. Yeah, and it started up right away already. Okay, generate new level. Uh, let's just leave out default settings here. And I think I should also still be able to see my Minecraft skin show up in here as well. Oh. Hey, why'd it go back to here? Come on. Almost there. Huh? Every single time I turn on this computer, it acts differently. I do not know what is going on. Oh, and it looks like some stuff on Betacraft Launcher has loaded in. Looks like the font colors are messed up, though. Uh, okay, let's try a different version of InDev. I, I know that 2330 works okay. Or at least it should work okay, hopefully. Okay. Let's see if this one works. And we are now disconnected from Wi-Fi, so... I wouldn't be surprised if I am gonna end up as a Steve now. But... Yeah, the whole point of this video was to show that Wi-Fi worked at all over the AGP slot, and I already kind of did that, so I'm just kind of showing off Minecraft like I always do now, because, hey, it's the only non-mobile game. Well, there is Minecraft Pocket Edition, but the only, I guess, not as casual game that I play. <laughs> what is going on? Okay, give me a moment. Let me just restart the computer, see if that fixes anything. <laughs> okay, so I restarted the system, and it's still doing the same thing. You'll see in just a moment that right after generating the world, it just crashes back to the main menu, so... Yep, there we go. 90% bug free. Guess we found that 10% of bugs. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. I think I already proved my point. This is an absolutely cursed hardware combination that nobody should ever try and use themselves. And... Normally, I like to make a disk image of the drive that I have stuff installed to, just so that then I have a way to quickly reference back to what I was doing, but I think in this case, I'm just gonna wipe the drive and <laughs> be over with this, because this has been way, way too painful <laughs> to set up and... <laughs> so, yeah, I guess that's the video. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Nothing is working as intended. It used to work as intended, but it's just been progressively breaking more and more for some reason. And until next time, I'm out. See ya.